All right, Jax, uh, so you want some help on looking at your PID tuning of the larger quad, the 10 inch quad uh, through the black box and you had a couple specific questions. So let's take a look. One of the first questions is, uh, or issue you're having is just oscillations, I guess. And also uh, when the craft's hitting the ground, uh, it bounces. So what I looked at there initially and I wanted to confirm first is that you have black box or I'm sorry you have air mode turned off which it appears like you do just confirm that but as per this log it looks like air mode is turned off that will result in the bounce um, what's you know a, it bouncing when it hits the ground is is fairly normal I don't know what you're getting but it's a it's a heavier craft so it's probably gonna have more of a bounce you know little micros just have little jittery jittery bounces bigger crafts might have a bigger bounce. Um, so, you know, it's an outside force, the ground acting on the craft, so it, it will have a tendency to, to bounce there. It depends how fast you're bringing it down. Obviously, if you have a vertical descent that's pretty quick, it's gonna bounce pretty good. Um, what you can do is just make sure, like you said in your post, to have arming on a stick or on a, um, a switch. And I usually just get close to the ground and just disarm. Uh, that's probably the, the best way to, to address that. The other is uh, vibrations and, and, and jello in your uh, in your video uh, video log. So looking at your black box, one of the first things before you ever do PID tuning is I always like to look at the vibration first. Now that you recorded a log with the notch uh, debug mode turned on, we can see the raw gyro noise, and you can see that up here in this this trace. So we can run a spectrograph on that, and you can see that there's a couple things here. If you notice, you see blue, blue, and blue. So those are all on the pitch axis. So we'll run the pitch axis here, and we'll run a spectrograph analysis of that, and you will see that um, it has a peak. Now this is without any soft filtering whatsoever. So this is the noise. If I believe you have soft mounted um, flight controller, but nevertheless. It, there's still noise, a peak of noise getting through here, and it looks like it's, it's pretty well contained. That is replicated also on the roll axis. It has a little bit of a different um, center location, but nevertheless, it's, it's generally the same. You have some excess D-term noise as a result of that. So let's, let's go to here and let's look at the gyro. So this is after the filtering, and you can see that that gyro is filtering out that noise pretty well but there's still a base load of noise here and and also on your roll axis. Since it's a larger craft what I would recommend doing is is you know I don't believe you're doing flips and rolls and all kinds of you know freestyle acrobatic racing with this so what I would recommend doing so latency and you know exact precise racing you know feedback is, is not really needed you know? course if I'm wrong on that and you are doing those kinds of things um, disregard this but or we can you know let me know we can talk about that but what I would do is I would move your uh, gyro low pass filter of 90 down to below this noise level here so what I'll typically do in the black box spectrum analysis is I'll just move this and you can see that's around 75 so I might move that down to your low pass filter to a 70 and then I would the same thing for the D term, um, the D low pass filter. I would move that down to, to 70 as well. I'd have a match. Hey there, it's Mark from the future. I wanted to recognize that by moving your low pass filter back for the D in, for the uh, gyro and D term, you are adding latency. Uh, according to this graphic, it's about 0.4 microsecond or milliseconds, which is 0.004 seconds. So what that's going to show as is between your what your gyro sees in your black box traces to what your PID error starts to represent, there's going to be another 0.004 second delay or 4 microseconds because uh, it can measure microseconds in the black box. So it's not, I mean, to the human perception, it's not a ton, but to the quadcopter it can be a lot when you're dealing with things like prop wash. I also want to talk about the phase relationship between the low pass filters and the D term. When you're throwing everything in the gyro through the low pass filter, which you are with the low pass filter itself, 
it's offsetting everything back for microseconds in addition to its current delay uh, that it's seeing at 90 hertz. Then the D term itself is going through another low pass filter before it sends the signal out, which is adding another delay to it. And there's a phase relationship between the P and the D term that's important to address prop wash and bounce back, high frequency prop wash and bounce back. So you'll see typically see the low pass filter for the D term staggered about 10 hertz offset in a higher frequency band than the low pass filter for the gyro. Uh, in the defaults, you'll see that the gyro low pass filter is at 90, the D term low pass filter is at 100, so there's that 10 hertz offset. That's to help with that phase relationship between the two. My recommendation was to was not taking that into account. And I'm coming at this whole thing that, you know, as a 10 inch quad, you're not really racing around gates and trees and, you know, all kinds of fancy inverted stuff and all that jazz. So you're not dealing with a lot of prop wash. You're not dealing with tight cornering and racing and things like that. If that's wrong, then some of these recommendations um, should be different. Prop wash is generally occurring anywhere between 20 hertz up and above, up to maybe even 100 hertz if you have really powerful motors. So that's why these low pass filters are set so high. If you're not dealing with that scenario, you can bring those low pass filters down. Um, like I said in another video, iNav, the, which is more of a cruising GPS assisted software, the low pass filters I think are down at like 30. Uh, Betaflight even started down at like 30 and 40 with the low pass filters. So those low pass filters can get much lower to attenuate that high end motor noise. Uh, with the introduction, uh, introduction of the notch filters in Betaflight, that's what enabled um, the developers to bring the low pass filters up higher so they can the craft can better deal with prop wash, but then the notch filters are still addressing the motor noise, which is less attenuated as the low pass filters get higher. So just a little bit more explanation, just to make this video just a little bit longer. <laughs> I hope that helps. The other thing I would do is I would change this D-term notch um, filter to be centered over top of this noise. Now you want to try to capture the, um, the roll and pitch axis. So you can see this peak motor noise is 162. On the pitch axis it is um, higher, or sorry, lower, it's 157. So I would center obviously 160, and I would do the cutoff down here around maybe 110. So 160, 110, and then it's going to mirror over on the other side. So let's pop in the beta flight, and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. So in beta flight, we're in the filters tab. Uh, your current um, uh, craft has the the um, notch filters turned off, the static notch filters, but you do have the D term notch filter turned on. So this is the center frequency, and so instead of 260, you'd set this to 160, and you'd set this to 110. And then the low pass filter, which we showed on the um, on the graph there, we were setting this to 70, and we were also setting this to 70. So that's that's the recommendations I, I have there. Um, you could try setting this. Uh, from bi quad to PT1, and I'm going to go into this stuff in just a little bit of uh, just a second here. Uh, PT1 is a, a lower latency filter, but faster, or uh, but it doesn't do as well for um, washing out noise. So that's the settings I was just talking about. Let's go back to the um, to the log here. So let's talk about these a little bit. What the notch filter does is it specifically tries to squash noise um, right at the center of the notch filter. So this will start. Right now it's at 260, so it's up here as the center, and it will squash out any noise. Um, it, it's almost like the intensity of the noise, if the higher the, uh, maybe this fictitious line I'm drawing here, the, the higher that is, the more power it has to squash out any noise. So it, look at it this way, like, you know, when it, when my, my, uh, Mouse is up here at the center of it. That's where it's really killing the most amount of noise. And then at the ends, or at the cutoffs, like at 160, as it's set here, it's not, 
it's not as intense it's not really killing as much noise so you're trying to center that it's, it's really the inverse of this you're trying to center that right over top of this noise if you can see your D term down here uh, on the pitch is still pretty overactive so what we want to try to do is you know position that the D term uh, notch filter over top of the noise you're seeing at the pre-notch, which was at two, the, the 160 and the 110 for the cutoff. And that should, as a result, tame down this noise. So this is the after the filtering. You know, when I'm doing a spectrograph here of this um, D-term, that's after the filtering has it taken place. So once you do that, you should see this noise level band in here be reduced. And as a result, if you're seeing that it is reduced up here, but it could use a little bit further reduction. You want to, you would want to spread that low cut, that low cut instead of having it at 110, maybe go down to 100, and so on and so forth. That you essentially, you know, looking at this spectrograph, this is the result. So you want to look at the result and say, okay, do I need to, you know, we're we're setting the filter based on the noise we see prior, but ultimately. The result you want to look at as well and see if you need to make some tweaks or adjustments and that's why again moving this this low pass filter cut down is to the 70 I'm trying to hit this amount of noise right here so um, taming the noise is critical to a good tune because let's talk about the next thing pit tuning hey there it's mark from the future again so I'm about to go into this big rambling about the tuning and the different what different things are and uh, I'm gonna leave that in here but it makes this fairly long and just to cut to the some chase on this uh, the attached graphic is from iNav and this is the presets for a 10 inch quad so you can see they're using much higher uh, proportional and derivative well not really just proportional and I'm thinking that's a part of where you need to be. Now this would come out in that Stinger Swarm tuning uh, video naturally, but I just wanted to give you this as a reference. Also, note some of the other things. Uh, they don't have, the, the user interface is a little different, but notice where they have the gyro low pass fil uh, cutoff frequency, 70 hertz. Notice where they have the D-term low pass cutoff frequency, which is up to the right of the gyro. They have that at 40, so they're not concerned about that phase relationship. So just take a look through this. Now they have the they have an accelerometer low pass. Uh, I I don't know what that is in Betaflight. You'd have to go into the CLI to look at that, and that has to do with auto level the accelerometer. So if you're not using auto level, you don't have to worry about it. But uh, they also have the yaw turned on. Um, notice where they have the D term um, notch filter frequency which is below the yaw on the right hand side there it's at 120 hertz and then they have the cutoff frequency at 90 so that's mimicking what we're seeing here in your quad a lower um, low pass filters lower d term filters uh, they're not taking into account that frequency offset but they're not dealing with prop wash as much and they have a low a lower uh, d term notch filter they also have the static notches back on the left side for the first gyro and the second turned on now in yours they're turned off but and I would recommend keeping them off because uh, iNav does not have the dynamic notch filter yet at least hopefully hopefully they'll add it I don't know but um, I just wanted to bring this up as a reference uh, for iNav uh, they have like I said there's presets in iNav so I just popped it out onto my board real quick and then uh, set the the presets for the 10 inch. If you need some more information out of this and you, you don't want to be flashing, just let me know. I, I have no issues in sending you some screenshots um, on what their defaults are. Hope this helps. Uh, I believe I passed, I, some of this stuff all merges together since I've provided a decent amount of help um, to a decent amount of people or maybe I just have a bad memory. But um, look up, there's a tuning video by Stinger Swarm uh, it's a great tuning video. You can see there's 100,000 views of this thing because it's so popular. So check that out. That um, will walk you through step by step how to tune your quad.
And it's re regardless of the size. He's not doing uh, flips or rolls. He's just doing sharp movements left or right. But essentially, he's zeroing out the I. He's zeroing out the D. He's doing his proportional. Uh, a lot of people will say, and I practice by the same, I don't zero out the I or the D. I just set them low, like 10, and set these to 10, and then start working on the, the P term. And you want to do sharp movements left or right. Um, so you're going to set them low. Uh, you know, for a mini quad, five inch quad, there's, you know, you're setting it down around 10 or 20 and starting from there. For yours, it might even be lower because it's a bigger craft. Um, so in that case, you might want to go to five or whatnot. And then you're trying to do a sharp a stick movement to the left or the right, and you're waiting, and you'll see in his video, until you get uh, quick oscillations back and forth. And then after you get it to those quick oscillations, then you would start to bump. You know, you may back it down a little bit and then start to bump up your D term um, to address bounce back. But, you know, you're not doing flips or rolls and bounce back, you're just doing sharp turn maneuvers. So, tuning, uh, you really need to watch that video and, and go through it for your specific craft. There's no, uh, and then after that, um, now that's all done line of sight, that's then where you can do a black box of it and then start looking for sharp stick movements to the left or the right side um, to see uh, where you're getting bounce back. P term is not going to address bounce back. P term gives you tight uh, craft movement to your stick inputs, to your RC commands. So you can look at your RC commands and you can look at what your craft is doing as far as the gyro is reading, which can be the the debug mode one, which is the actual, or it's after it's filtered, there'd be a little bit of latency between this and this. But nevertheless, this is what then the, the, the PID loop sees. And you can look at the proportional relationship between these two, and that's the P term. So you want to get it essentially the same. So as you're doing a stick command, your craft is immediately responding. But the problem is it can overshoot. It will always overshoot. That's where the D term comes in to address those overshoots. So D term is overshoot. But if you start bumping the D term up, your motors will get hot. If you bump it up too high, you'll smoke a motor or burn out a motor. With only 10 to 15 seconds of flight, like in the, if you would just crank your D term up to 80 or 100 and go fly, you'll probably smoke a motor within 10 seconds. Um, so you don't want to do that. So when D term, as you're bumping it up, first of all, you're smoking a motor because there's too much noise. And that noise is there it's uh, you're increasing the intensity of that by bumping up the d term so you want to really kill out the noise as much as possible on the d term first that allows you to bump it up higher before your motors get warm as you're bumping your d term up you want to constantly be you know you bump it up you arm it you take off fly for two three five seconds land feel the motors are they warm or hot what does warm mean warm when they say you know the motor's getting hot that means you can you can't hold on to them like it hurts to hold on to them if they're just warm to the touch that's okay but you're starting obviously to approach the limit so you either need to kill out more noise on the d term by introducing additional filtering which you know you could introduce um, the static notch filters so things of that nature um, any soft filtering adds latency. So you're trying to stay away from soft filtering altogether. But if you have this excessive noise from vibration, it's kind of catch-22. You've got to do something about it or you can't get a good tune. But you know, the more of this filtering you turn on, the more latency it adds, which also impacts your tune and the ability to get what you want. So you're trying to really keep it to a minimum. The first thing you want to do that doesn't increase latency is soft mounting. Soft mounting your flight controller, soft mounting your motors, soft mount as much as you can soft mount. Um, that's the first thing. The next thing you can do in here is um, the filter types, which I didn't touch on yet. So by default, your D-term, D-term low pass filter, not the gyro low pass filter, is set to bi-quad. That is a better filter, but it has more latency. Uh, to have better or lower latency, you can set this to uh, PT1. Hit the drop down PT1. That has lower latency, however, it's not as good as a filter. So pick what you want. If you can get your noise level, your base noise level down, which you, your base noise level is not too bad, um, you can set that to PT1. 
personally, I, in your case, I would set this to PT1 now, change this to what I have shown here, change this to 70, this to 70 as well, and start from there. See how that works out for your motor noise. Then, if you know, you can upload your log, we'll take a look at it, give you my thoughts and opinions. Then you'd start, once we have the noise addressed, as much as that's uh, practical or, uh, you know, to a, a certain level, then uh, you can start doing your PID tuning. Looking at some specific um, moves in your current traces here, you can see, I can see here you're doing a, a hard stick movement to the right and to the left. Um, and it looks like this is the bounce back you're talking about because after the stick movement gets to here, you still have this little bit of bounce back here. So what I'm seeing here is your I term is somewhat a part of that and your P term obviously is the bounce back. Um, that's what generates the bounce back. Um, but your D term is fairly uh, light. I don't see any, any advanced behavior here. Generally, your D term uh, is mimicking, in general, the same uh, path that your P term is. It's just set ahead of it, so it's a derivative of it. So it's it uh, anticipates the move ending before it actually occurs. Uh, it just has to do with doing a derivative. It's a mathematical thing. So. Um, Looking at here, it looks like your D term is fairly low. You only have it at 10. I would bump that up. I would start bumping these up to address bounce back. Uh, you may want to even push I down some as well. Um, I can, you know, you can get as, you know, I is a very laggy, sluggish um, term it's essentially trying to adjust for like say you have your battery mounted uh, and your quad's not perfectly balanced maybe your battery when you mount it on this specific flight it's a little bit mounted farther to the back while as you take off the you know the, so the quad's going to want to shift backwards well the the i turn figures that out and then you know compensates for that so that it, your you know when your craft's not perfectly centered or balanced it now is compensated after a couple seconds or milliseconds um, but then from, you know, you need enough I term to have enough weight so it can actually compensate and push the motors, the back motors to be more, a little bit more powerful to compensate for that additional weight in the back. But now if you go the other way and the I term's too powerful, then when you go to do a, a backwards movement, you know, to pitch backwards, it won't let it because the I term, it's almost like molasses, you know, is it thick, is it thin molasses or thick molasses? So as you bump up the I term, the molasses is getting thicker. Now, if you're bumping up the I term, that because when you do throttle punches, you can see the nose of the craft moves all around or it starts to yaw this way or that, you shouldn't be bumping the I term up for that. You should be using anti-gravity gain. So anti-gravity gain is a multiplier. Right now it's set to one, so that if you do a punch and you see it yaw left, right, or the nose bounces up or back, it, it actually, you can multiply whatever these terms are by whatever's put in anti-gravity gain. And the anti-gravity gain is found right here in beta flight. So normally it's two and a half to three uh, on a craft. You can leave it to one until you experience those, until you're tuning for that, and then you can start bumping it up. Uh, but you wouldn't want to raise the I terms. So you want to keep the I terms um, honestly as low as you can because the I terms will if you're in a sharp move or a roll maneuver you know for a five inch it's going to start to experience I term wind up well you know imagine you're doing it uh, taking a craft and doing a, a big roll um, that I term is going to start to roll with the crest the, the molasses starts to move with the bottle and at the end of the roll you know, you don't want that to be thick molasses because it's going to keep trying to push the bottle uh, in the direction of the roll. Well, if, it, if the I terms are really high, what's that going to be? It's going to be bounce back. Then your craft's going to try to adjust back and your D term's going to have to fight against the I. So you want to try to keep I as low as possible, but um, for agile movement, 
but obviously the eye is there to kind of stiffen things up. So it's a feel and it's a you know craft per craft basis um, needs to be set. So that's a little definition on that. So uh, eye is a part of that bounce back a little bit here. So you may want to drop that down a little bit. Um, I would bump up D, but after you address this D motor noise first. And um, let me see what else we got. So I guess the last thing, and I wanted to uh, show you this, if you just, you know, you can bring up a bunch of uh, items here in your Black Box Explorer by going into the graph setup. And I like to get this set up. One uh, critical thing after you do get it set up is saving a bunch of them. So if you come into this uh, little question mark up here, you can see there's some shortcut keys. Uh, when you're looking at noise, you want to hit S to turn off the smoothing in, in Explorer. And you can see that's right here if you forget. And then also you can save um, views. So if you hit uh, Shift uh, and 1 through 9, any of those keys, then it will save the current graph setup. So definitely do a shift one or whatever for your favorite, so on and so forth. Um, I recommend honestly setting it up like this or I wouldn't have it set up this way. It's much easier for me if I want to see certain ones to come back in, remove certain ones, and then when I want to get back to the full suite, I just hit, you know, you hit, instead of shift one, you'd hit just one on your keyboard and then it comes back. This saves with uh, Explore so as long as your black box Explorer doesn't get uninstalled or removed or whatever it should always be there but you can see I have one has uh, this setup I mean, if I hit two I go to where it's just the debug mode the gyros and the motors three it's uh, more looking at the P terms and, and things of that nature yeah there's obviously times I want to look at different things but I find I just go back to one a lot and just remove other things out of it so anyways that's one thing Looking at, if you want to look at any one specific item, like if I want to look at the motors here real quick, because I saw there was a thing about the props and you know are the motors big enough to handle it, at least for the moves that you're demanding it to do, it looks like the motors are fine. If you would come into here and you would see that you pitched hard right and the motor spiked and flatlined at the top, that means the flight controller is demanding more than the motors can provide then that's how you know you've over propped the motor or you've undersized the motor for the weight of the craft um, that's a that's a very real thing that happens a lot too where the motors aren't powerful enough for these uh, more budget quads so here um, that's a punch out so you know we're good there but uh, if you do a sharp move to the right or to the left here you can see you know we're not it's not demanding more than it can provide um, the other part that uh, was probably triggering that comment is how quickly are the did the motors have enough torque were there to spin up the props fast enough you know here it's the ultimate demand in that scenario you'd see a big lag um, where the motors don't spin up till far after the um, the uh, the uh, the demanded roll rate or whatnot. So uh, you can take them, you know, and they they do spin out a uh, peak here, but you can see um, that's in a punch out. And it's interesting to note uh, some of this stuff. Now, in here you have a little bit of yaw that throws it off, but if you can do it, if you can manage to get a nice clean no right hand stick input and a nice clean punch out with there's no yaw in it. So you have to really focus on that. And you can see which motor peaks out. You can actually see that's your weakest motor in the four. And that's actually limiting the performance of the whole craft. So it's the, the you know, the, the other two to maintain flight, or the other three, will stay low. So if you have one motor that's drastically, you know, the, the three motors are drastically lower than the one, you, you know, if you'd replace that one motor, you'd get more power out of your whole craft. So that's an interesting thing. But, um, and I, I, looking at this here a little bit, I think where the comment is coming from with the, are the motors powerful enough? It, it seems like there's quite a bit of delay. You know, you're getting the apex of your command right around here. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, quite a bit of delay before it actually reaches the same in the gyro. Now there's all kinds of filtering that causes delay and so on and so forth. But you can see 
I'm just surprised at how pushed back the pit air is. I don't think it has to deal with the motors. I think it has and the this the performance of the motors, although I don't have that pulled up here. I believe it just has to do with your P-turn being um, you know, really low on this. Now, that said, if you're getting oscillations um, after doing a sharp movement to the left or to the right, then and you're tuning, then that's as high as you can go on your P-term. So I have to think about that one some more, but it does seem like there's a decent amount of delay from you know the stick input, the RC command, and then till the quad actually gets moving, which is, you know, which was, uh, that's where you'd increase the P-term to, to, to minimize that as much as possible. The other thing is I wouldn't, decrease your PID loop time to two kilohertz. I would keep that, you know, the faster your your um, gyro loop, which you have up at 8K, and then the faster your PID loop, which you, if you can run at 8K as well, um, or 8K, 8K, or 8K, 4K, uh, and you don't want to exceed the 20, 30% throttle. So it has, you lowered that because you thought it had to do something with the bounce back, it has nothing to do, or not the bounce back, but the uh, bouncing when it hits the ground, it has nothing to do with that. But it does give you better performance the higher these values because the more responsive it is, you know, the, the, the cycle times are, are faster. So anyways, push that back up, but don't exceed CPU util utilization in black box of uh, down here of more than um, like 30 to 40%. Um, that will be a part of this lag delay as well. Now, as you have these faster loop times, that picks up more motor noise. So it's a everything's a trade-off. But um, I think you'll be fine. So push that back up to 8K, 4K, or 4K, 4K. And another thing here that's part of this is obviously you're running 6S, but that doesn't have to deal with delay. It just has to deal with that motor torque. I'm sure that gives the motors a good amount of torque. Okay, that's all for now. Um, another thing you can look at for, I guess, one last thing uh, you can look at for responsiveness is if you want it to have kind of a slingshot effect when you're moving your stick, that's what this uh, D set point weight is. Uh, it's kind of like the mouse accelerator if you were around then or know about that when you used to move your mouse. If you move it fast uh, on your computer, and you turn mouse accelerator on and move it, you know, if you had it set at two, it will move it twice as fast as what you moved it at. And there was a certain speed that you had to move it at for it to, to meet that threshold to, to, to do that multiplier. That's what this is. So um, the speed settings in the, in the um, CLI, I'm not gonna get into that, but the, you know, if you want your stick inputs to be more kind of like a, a throw or a snappy feel, uh, you can start pushing this up. Then if you have bounce back, you can start lowering this. Um, basically, this is leaving center stick position. This is coming back to center stick position. So if you want to um, have no, um, no acceleration coming backwards, then you would set this to zero. If it's at one, whatever this is at, then it's going to multiply it by one coming back, which would be the same. So if you set this to zero, then have whatever, you know, obviously it's 0 0.72 times zero is zero. Um, and this is moving back to center stick position, which you generally want to be low, if not zero. But, um, all right, I think that's enough for this video. Hopefully you found some of this helpful. We've reviewed some new things in black box and so on and so forth. Um, sorry, it took me a little bit to, to get this out. Uh, been busy with a couple things, but Nevertheless, uh, more questions, comments, black boxes, go ahead, feel free to post them to the group, and I'm sure myself and other people will take a look. Thanks. See you. Bye.